We get a lot of customers asking about engines, what we would choose, you know, what's best, blah, blah, blah. And we always say there's no wrong option because there's not. But it depends on the person. It depends what you want. It depends on everything, or what you're going to use it for, what kind of, you know, things you want. So we decided today we're going to weigh everything. Well, we've already weighed everything. I will show you right now to show the difference in weights. And we're gonna talk about from our experiences and also from our opinions, like what we personally prefer, because again, there's no right or wrong answer for a lot of this. What's best for what? Because when it comes down to it, and it sounds, it could sound rude, but it's not as true. Most people don't even know what they want. Because it's impossible. It, you, you know, you can have, until you've got the experience of it, most people don't know what they want, and often their ideas of what's important is wildly wrong. And it's not because they're stupid, because they're not stupid, but you don't know until you try it. So this video is going to try and explain to you, and it's not just for these cars. If you're watching this and think, oh, this is about MR2s, I haven't even got an MR2. It doesn't matter, this is about cars. Thomas is probably going to talk about motorbikes, never mind bloody cars. So, <laughs> Should we start with that? Well, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna talk about just the engine weight thing, right. and then we're gonna go into why, because obviously people make a big deal about engine weights. So, and since we've just weighed them, I mean this is still hanging from it. We'll, uh, we'll go from there. So basically, our three engine choices with our swaps is the 180, the VR5, or the VR6. The, the most common, obviously, and to be honest, easiest, is the 180 swap. It sits in exactly the same place as the standard 1ZZ or 2ZZ, although it does sit a bit lower, but sort of front to back um, positioning is the same, but it's just these are not as tall as a 1ZZ, so technically it's slightly better center of gravity. Anyway, the main thing to come from this is these are iron block, ZZs are alloy block. So everyone thinks, oh, these are heavy, ZZs are light. In reality, because we've already weighed them, a bare ZZ block, as in no manifolds, no nothing, just a bare engine with a clutch and flywheel on each, a ZZ was 20 kilos lighter than this, which alone is nothing. But the main difference is when a gearbox is fitted so the the standard gearbox the standard Toyota one which is weak as well the weak five speed or the O2M we use on all of these which is a six speed and way stronger the difference in weight between this and the ZZ is only five kilos really five kilos is nothing no one in the world would feel five kilo difference so the reality is you're not going to notice a handling difference in any way with a 180t versus a 1ZZ or 2ZZ and this was with both engines fully dressed. So engines, gearboxes, manifolds, turbo was even on it. Five kilo difference, nothing. So people often say, but aren't the VRs way heavier? Some people, well, we've, had, we've heard things like, aren't they 100 kilos heavier? Well, obviously common sense says, look at them, that VRs are very compact. So they're not gonna be, but yeah, they are heavier. And we have just weighed all of these in this spec so this would be like a typical vr6 big turbo setup so it's a complete vr6 two heavy cast manifolds and two small ish but not light turbos and an inlet so obviously if you was doing a big single turbo it'd be a stainless manifold and a single turbo which would probably weigh a bit less than that so this is a, a fair number a fair weight comparison for this one we weighed it like this, but we also kept the engine stand part on it when we hung it. Again, which would add a bit of weight to say be a, a bigger, even bigger turbo manifold. So this would be a typical um, 180 big turbo setup. And we did much the same on this. We put the inlet manifold on it and bottled a turbo to it. And left this on it to again, demonstrate a typical VR5 turbo, fairly big turbo setup. And the weights were 
120 kilos for that. So not much at all. The R5, 31 kilos more. 31 kilos is, you know, it's significant, but it's debatable where most people would even feel that. And we'll talk about positioning as well in a moment. And positioning is very different between the VRs and the 180 and ZZ engines. A VR6 is another just over 10, about 12 kilos more than that. So 40, yeah, 42 kilos between. This will be much more, more heavy than the what the bigger a bigger difference? Your, I wouldn't expect on your 15. Yeah, it's only one cylinder though, isn't it? You know, it's yeah, like. Yeah, but he's a, he's a big block, so he's. I don't all the stuff. I was expecting. I mm. was expecting more. I had it in my head. It was about 15. So but, yeah. he's, he's a good surprise. To be yeah, he's, yeah. He's not bad. There's not much in it. But yeah, I mean, you could say, oh wow, uh, 40, 42 kilos heavier, the R6 to 180, but. Which was 42 kilos, that's, this is still lighter than uh, a Jay-Z. I think it's probably lighter than an RB actually. Neither of those are light. This is way more compact and it's 42 kilos. It's not a lot. And bear in mind, a case swap is heavier than this. So a case swap to this is less than 40 kilos. I can't remember what a case swap weighed again, but I think it's, it's somewhere, it'll be somewhere in it was about halfway. So the reality is, yeah, you would feel the 40Ks, this to this, back to back, but it's still not a huge amount. I mean, even the standard exhaust system on a MR2 weighs about 20 kilos, it's that heavy. But another big factor is engine position. So let me show you, well, first I'll show you the standard ZZ and 1.8T position on my daily out here. This is where the engine sits as standard, and this is the same position it sits when it's a 180. So basically, it's behind, well, in front of the strut towers, hence it being mid-engine. Quite a way in front too, because I think there forward would be mid-engine, and it's there, basically. Um, a 180 sits about in two inches lower but regardless, in actual position, it's here, roughly in line with the front of the strut tower. So let me show you where a VR sits. This is where a VR sits, and I think already you can see it's wildly different. So whereas a ZZ or a 180 sits there, this sits there. It's approximately well, it's more than four inches from the top, but even at the bottom, the difference is about four inches. You can see it's huge. So again, you've got the argument. And again, actually, even where the height wise, this is slightly lower than standard, but either way, it's still height wise lower than our ZZ sits. So you've also got the argument there of what's going to affect the handling more less weight or engine more mid-mounted again there's there's no real answer and there's so many other factors that people don't think about important factors that may be more important and this is what we mean about things not necessarily being as they seem but at least now you've got the weight differences so you can make that mind up but we can't there's no wrong option they all, I think it's, it's that close. You wouldn't like, say if there's all three conversions, all with the same power, would they be wildly different in times? No. Would they be exactly the same? No. But every, with everything else equal, with the difference in weight versus the difference in engine position, there's not, it's not a, um, a deal breaker and this is the thing people mis make mistakes on especially when people 
haven't got the experience of it they just presume and listen to the internet or whatever and you just don't know unless you try you don't know a good example and i see it all the time is you see people asking questions they want to build a drag car and it's to me this sounds like madness but to maybe even people watching it this sounds normal you see people going i want to build a drag car so what turbo do i want i because because it's going to be a drag car i don't want it laggy it's, which is exactly backwards because in reality a drag car is the one car where lag doesn't matter because you'll be using launch control or something or other so it will be on boost before you even leave the line so the lag is irrelevant track car and stuff you might want a less laggy car road car you might want a less laggy car but a drag car you don't care you just fit the biggest turbo that you could possibly spool up <laughs> you know it's, and this is what i mean it's it's way more complicated than that so you know and yeah so i think what me and tom is going to do now is kind of talk about what we think and our experiences and the differences and although this shouldn't like this isn't like gospel because again it's personal opinions it will give you hopefully a good guide to what you think you would enjoy right, so i think a good example is although it has nothing to do with with cars and amateurs is that what was two years ago i went back into bike racing yeah about two years ago about two years ago I was back into bike racing means that uh, just got my steering wheel. Um, making decisions like people making decisions what engine to put in the cars because then we're talking about tools because this is what we're talking about. I didn't know uh, because it was a new discipline for me what bike to change to, 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 to choose what class to race and um, spent ages doing research talking with people uh thinking obviously what is going to be good for me but again this is just purely imagination so i went and re started race in the big class like twin cylinder 200 kilograms motorcycles although i'm small and it's, that was a clearly bad decision but spend the money spend time when the, it went good but what, only now as i have the experience in that racing I can understand, I can clearly say that that was a mistake. I wouldn't have done it if I was going back in time. But that being said, I don't, know, I don't regret it. Because without making those mistakes, I wouldn't have the knowledge I have today. So if back in time I went on the small bikes, today I'll be thinking, well, maybe if I went big bikes, it would be better. It's, an, it's another no bad decision thing as well though, isn't it? Because you still loved it. Oh no, I still loved it. I yeah. mean, making building that experience, it was, still, it was still great. I mean, I've won a couple of races, I've injured myself, I ended up in hospital, broken ribs and shoulders and all that stuff. And I loved it. I still got a race bike. And so no matter what, it's not bad. The problem is, which is not even a problem, is like you said before, it sounds bad to say that people don't know what they want. But they really don't. No, it's just I human nature. Know. Yeah. I didn't know what to want. We're not psychic. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're not gonna taste it, you don't know if it's good for you or not. You know, and uh, and, and so on. So it's pretty simple, really. Um, coming back to this stuff, I always say, well, well, I'm making videos over the progress of the road because finally we've finished all the development. It doesn't have to be developed anymore. Uh, we developed this with the VR5 DSG, so I said, okay, I can make the videos and so the progress finally we're gonna put it back on the road. How many times I said this isn't my first choice of the engine? Every time. Every time. If this was purely for me, this car would be on the road ages ago with 1.8. For few reasons. Simplicity, um, the engine simplicity, the swap, the, the work simplicity, less work, and it's just and if something goes wrong, it's easy to replace, it's easy to fix. Uh, we can, you know, talk about differences in the engines for hours, but that's not about it. But I also say, once this engine is in, I can't say I dislike it. It's a VR5 turbo, it's so amazing, it's gonna make loads of fun, more than I need. 
you know it's gonna be just just great and the only thing i wanted is remove the dsg and put the manual gearbox that is something i know i want so that's the good point uh, regardless of that if this was vr6 turbo will i dislike it no because like i said there's no bad choice but exactly what you want to do so this for example for me i think as overall just quick car fun car occasionally track days i think it falls somewhere in between yeah and between, also part of this was the the sound thing wasn't it it was like sound, this sounds amazing yeah. which is part of the enjoyment so for me this has to be purely a driver's uh, a driving experience car, you know just an enjoy to, to drive it obviously performance as well because that's part of it it falls i think in between mm -hmm. for me if this was a purely race car 1.8 but there's stuff to add to that if this was um, a car that will do stuff that you do trying to piss people off in the big expensive cars probably the vr6 because that's the big daddy you know that is that is the one that makes the most of the car with less effort so it's gonna be less under stress let's say this is well this is what we're supposed to make about 800 brakes if you do it with the 1.8 you can't get 800 brakes but the engine is gonna be sweating it's gonna be on the edge so obviously they have some choices um five six hundred brakes we are five probably best option 500 brakes you already proven that yeah. 1.8 doesn't break even a sweat is is awesome you, you you try to break that engine so many times it's like well, okay great but then again not even that is a good guy because like we say like you mentioned truck use or even a race car or just travel days okay we're not talking purely racing as you get paid to win races you do it for pleasure so the car still has to suit your style and your pleasure my style is precision i like to study the truck inch by inch the chassis have to be optimal if something is not right i can't i can't drive it anymore. i have to go back in a piece have, because that's me that's me and then you have other people jumping a car whatever it is just a lot of fire just running through the corners not looking at the apex just a lot of fire hammering down and that's fine too because sometimes they are very difficult people to pass you know if you even get close to them so again it's all to preferences it's there's there's no win situation um as bad as this sounds there's i i don't know what to say it, <laughs> Well, what you said about but, what you said about the Audi yeah, was a I'll, good example. For example, I am. It's not pure case that the VR5, VR6 sits in that position. Sits in that position. We have to be because this slightly heavier. We have to. We try to compensate the added weight, which is not much. A bit more forward because the geometry, the weight distribution, sometimes means more than the weight itself. Now. Don't want to be annoying by going back to my motorcycle. It's 200 kilograms bike, same class. I've changed it, it's a prototype now. But what I did mostly is to change the weight distribution. It's not much lighter than it was before. I thought it was lighter, but it's not. It's very close, the same weight. But the weight distribution changed the motorcycle completely. And exactly the same thing we're doing here. So I think, for example, the VR5, which is what? 30 kilograms heavier than 1.8, you say? Yes. About 30 kilograms heavy, the difference, like, obviously depending on what turbo you're going to put, it could be heavy, it could be lighter, blah, 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 uh, but roughly is there. But it's more for the forward. Mm. Now, you remember one thing, it's not just the weight distribution, but also the, the, the suspensions are designed for a certain weight distribution, right? If you look at the traction bars, for example, on the rear engine cars, in this case, MR2, they are widely different than on the cylinder, on the front mounted engine cars, okay? Because the weight is different. You have to compensate the position of the weight with the traction, and that's how you build the proper chassis, proper geometries. It's not just what it is, and then you have four wheels, and then just everything magically works. No, it's not. MR2s, they have a very good geometry and they're able to put the power down incredibly good. We already seen this. 
I mean, in a lightweight car, we even would use 400 brakes. We're thinking it's gonna light the tires everywhere, anywhere. Just like hooks up. And it's not, and it's not just because the weight is on the back, but also because the geometry is, and the geometry is able to use that weight distribution. You know, so, so that is important too. Another thing, like you mentioned, Audi. So for me, having an engine which is out of place, like Porsches, I couldn't have a Porsche. They could be as good as possible, I'd be itching. It's like the engine sitting behind the car, you drag in the engine like on the trailer. Audi, you know, the Audi I drove, engine literally in the front of the car, in the wrong position. You have the engine, which is even longitudinal, so it's like the first thing in the car. Then you have the gearbox, and from the bell housing you have the drive shaft, so you have the front axle. That is completely wrong. It's, for me, it's, it's, I was panicking. It's like, this is wrong. And yet, I jumped in on that car, and it was amazing. It's just forward drive, it just drove so, just good. Everything was extremely well balanced. So, when I'm getting to everything, um, everything can be compensated. So, if you build, for example, a track weapon, 800 brake horsepower, you want uh, a bigger engine so it's going to make that power comfortably you compensate with a different geometry with the size of tires etc etc if you're going to do it lightweight you do a different geometry different setup different tires does not mean that one is going to be better than the other purely because one is heavier than the other because otherwise every single race car is just going to be as, as light as possible and then you have heavy cars and they're still quick as fuck mm. on the track so you know it's 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 difficult because you have to combine a lot of things together and there's no there's no winning formula because even if you have the winning formula in the chassis and the combination with the engine and transmission then you have a driver who jumps in the car and it's just not his car and that's professionally and then you add to that top the driver's experience or the driver's fun because we're building these cars for us and for customers to have fun. I can give you, like you said, I can give you an awesome car, very efficient. Like, gee, this is very great, and yet it could be boring for you. You're gonna choose something that you have fun with. How was your Skylight? My Skylight is a perfect design. example, yeah. Great car. You didn't like it. Yeah. Was the reason I was, I was amazed. Like, what are you about? This is a great car. It was amazing technically in every way. Yeah, but you didn't like it. Didn't do it for me. It's. I, I don't think we can actually <laughs> help people too much besides saying you just have to do an experience and see what you like because, you know, this could be an awesome car for me. It could be as efficient as you want. I can have a lot of fun. You could drive it and say, mm, I want it me. a bit different. Yeah. Exactly. So. It's like, this is why we say you can't go wrong with these cars and these setups because all of it, nobody could ever get in one of these, even like one with a, a basic 180T swap and be like anything but, yeah, this is awesome. But to get exactly what a person wants is personal preference because there is no right and wrong answer. There's so, you know, weight distribution or weight or whatever that's just two factors of many. Like you said about the Audi, the reason that was amazing is it had a massive disadvantage of where the engine was, yet the suspension setup, yeah, everything else, instead way overcompensated for it and it, it turned it into an incredible car. And no one can say that Audis didn't make history of how good they were. Yeah, were. exactly. Despite a very well known bad weak point, you know? And, well. And it's not even with just in rallying, because like IMSA racing and all the circuit stuff, the engine was still there in the front, and they didn't like suffer from terminal understeer or any of that bullshit. It just because you can't. There's there's so many factors in cars. It's so there's so much to talk about this. It's George's um, Elise, hmm. or was it Elise? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. VR6, big yeah. heavy VR6. On the back of that car, which is like you say, it makes even bigger difference because the car is even lighter. So the difference in in in, in engine and weight distribution between the standard engine and VR6 was even greater than in this. 
and uh, against all the odds what were people thinking he said the car just looked amazing yeah the video was proven just great yeah and so and i think the engine was further back than this as well that being said for example you kind of go if you're doing track car or race car you're trying to go as light as well distributed as possible there's no denying that hmm. and uh, if i was building a race car yeah probably 1.8 but it also would and depend can, on how much power you require exactly what class will i be racing also when i say probably is because i already made that mistake thinking hmm. that i know what i want only to understand that it isn't once you're there uh, so if this was 1.8 it would be 50 kilograms yeah. lighter, correct yeah but let's say reli reliably or let's say the same amount of durability from the 1.8 because i don't want to work on it i want to use it i want to enjoy it i uh, don't spend money and time in the workshop uh 1.8 we've proven 500 breaks i think it can still have like 500 breaks in yeah the in, in my opinion well my not opinion from experience well a good example i think would be uh billet badger fives ibiza race yeah, car yeah that's a great example that's a good example because it's 180 and it's used in actual circuit racing at 600 odd horsepower okay and that lifts so 600 is a is good it, number is it much bigger of a build than yours well it's the usual forge pistons blah 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 blah. but it's not like it's some nothing it's big. nothing nothing super fancy and that team prawn racing a3 again similar power we're talking yeah there's there's 180s making you know 550 600 horsepower and they're reliable for hard seriously hard track use so i reckon that's that's probably about i think beyond that 600. I think beyond 600, and even then it has to be a good build, I would prefer something bigger, personally. I mean, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I just, like you said, it's something you don't want to have but to fix all the time. You, would you actually want the size need, because need is, is different, it's one, because we're talking pleasure, we're talking fun, one more than 600 in an MR2 in a truck. Depends how you're going to drive it, isn't it? That's exactly that. Most people would be, uh, you know, a 400 brake one would be some more than enough. Some people want to be comfortable. Because, so, for example, mm. some people like to be able to go flat out with the engine because they can feel that they use it 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Some people want to have the power they never get used to because it's too much. Yeah. But generally speaking, 600 is roughly there what you want. Well, yeah, no, no argument. No argument. I, I, for example, I like fireful stuff. Yeah. Especially on the mic, so I like very really like, yeah, put me in there, in trouble. That being said, so let's say for example, five, six hundred brakes, okay, 1.8. If I want 800, this can make 750, 800 probably, at the mm. same kind of level of durability. Probably. We don't really know these as good yeah. as 1.8. But let's say, let's say they are, right? 30 kilograms more. That's not a big, big no. trade-off. You're probably gonna switch from 265 to 275 styles. Yeah. And there's you, there's you can write a grip, yeah. you know? Uh, so. Well, this is the thing you've got like, and it's much the same if you went up a, a step more to the six, it's like. Oh no, that's. It's hard anything, isn't it? The five is that um, Audi. Yeah, because don't forget, again, this is the enjoyment thing, don't forget. I think we've sold more VR kits for five cylinder people than six because people yeah, do it. want sound, you know, that's part of the enjoyment. That's why most people don't really get into Teslas because there's, because <laughs> if, the, it don't matter if they're fast, if you've not got the, the oral, is it oral when it's the ears? Whatever it is, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, 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 it's all part of the, the experience. You know, that's why people like, well, I, I especially, I love things that do big fucking flames and bangs and shit. Don't make it faster as such. That might be a side effect, but it's part of the bloody enjoyment. If I look in my rear view mirror and it's lighting up the bloody sky with flames, it makes me smile. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's what it's all about. Then even if you was only making, say, 600, the fit and forget nature of a VR6, and don't forget, we're talking 
600 brake for say a 1.8T on track, you'll probably realistically want to run race fuel to be safe. If you're, if it's a pure track weapon. Whereas if you're making well, this is the thing. 600 brake in a VR6, it, it doesn't care. Well, this it, is the thing, you're, you're getting paid or you want to win races or you want to have fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, my fun is driving like a fucking lunatic without being arrested. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a big fan of 180s because A, I work on all my own shit and they are incredibly easy to fit, they're incredibly easy to remove, they're incredibly easy to rebuild, they're incredibly easy to work on. That's relevant when you're really doing your own thing, and I am. And it's also an engine I know, which is part of it. I'm sure I could rebuild a VR, but I've never done it yet. So have I got the, this? I've got 100% confidence in. This, no, because I've never tried it. I don't know if it's any harder. I've seen Thomas do it, and it clearly wasn't a bad, you know, super hard. Of course, it's not as simple, because there's more parts. But he did it fine. He's not, you know, he would have said to me if there was any bad things. A VR is not particularly hard to work on, is it? It's oh, just no, more bits. They, they're never harder. It's just very more complicated. It takes you more time. Yeah, there's more parts. So you all. have the time you're going to die, you can do it with the engine in the car. Yeah. This one, you have to move the gearbox because it's, it's on that side. The yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. But it's changed. Yeah. So once, you, for example, this one here, we have to build this engine. Uh, rebuild the engine, do the, do the new chain, it's going to last you... Right Initially, now. to install a VR is harder because you have to remove the bulkhead and all that. But once it's installed, it's, it's, as, it's actually easier to work on. I mean, because even things, you know, if you've got all this room with the removable engine cover, but even like the transmission, it's super easy on one of these. You can do it in situ, unlike most cars. You can leave the engine in place, gearbox just comes off without removing any suspension. But even with a VR, no different. How long did it take you to remove that gearbox? Oh, no, it was late this morning. Half an hour. Half an hour, yeah. And I had to remove the plenum to do it. Yeah. Oh, there you go, I then. I don't have to, yeah. but because I'm working... Oh, this, I actually want to... Okay, we combine that video with this, because I want to make a video how to do it on your driveway, because I'm not using the ramp. I'm in a workshop, no. but the yeah. car is here. It doesn't move. So this is on an axle stance, you can see. I'm doing this as anyone else would do in a driveway. Two um, ratchet straps. I got the roller case so you can use that. So because of the roller case, I removed the plenum and I used the engine hanger to obviously hold the engine there and that from the exhaust manifold to the back of the car. And I see it's very simple. Mm. So in a dodgy way, without the workshop, without the ramp, 30 minutes, yeah. including removing the plenum to make it simple. Exactly. So it's very, very efficient. It's another reason why there's no really wrong answer of all of this. No. However, now, for example, you say, oh, all right, but once you, well, once you've done all this work for the VR5, VR6, and if you change, in this case, for example, he, he's gonna change his mind and, and doing 1.8, I'm okay with that. Because, imagine how much more space you have to work on a 1.8. Oh, mate, I'm considering doing that to my car at some yeah, point. Yes, yeah. next year. So, so I can put a big plenum in everything. Exactly, massive plenum, and, and this gives you so much advantage to work on the engine, regardless yeah. of the setup, with ease. Now, 1.8 don't have to have it, but if you're willing to go forward and do it, it's even better. Yeah, exactly. You know? I'm probably going to at Jesus, some point. If you want to keep your ones in Z, the original one, yeah. do it. Well, yeah, a lot of, well, a lot of case swap people have shown interest in this removable yeah, thing. It just makes sense. Because that, this was part of the reason Thomas didn't like the case swap, because it is a bugger to work on. Like, you know, nearly every case swap MR2 owner will admit, you know, even things like doing the alternator, you, you're, it's practically easier to take the whole bloody engine out just to do an alternator. Well, my book it was, it was hammered out. Yeah, yeah. It because yeah. it was like... Nah, and it was done. still hard work, wasn't it? I mean, and again, this is the beauty of why I like 180s. The alternator and the inlet manifold and everything, you can have a standard bulkhead and you just take it out. There's enough room. But, yeah. Anyway, going back to sort of my opinions. I really like 180s because it's what I know, what I like. And also, part of it, again, this is heart versus head thing. I like being the underdog. I like having the small four cylinder, you know, little engine rather than the big daddy VR or whatever. I kind of like that. I kind of like, even now, I'm at, say if my car blew up, I'm currently at, well, I made 516 on the 14 on the dyno. I'm like 50 horsepower nitrous. I'm probably like 560 horsepower. Even if, my car, I must be on borrowed time. I say borrowed time, my car's lasted fucking years. But even 
if and when it decides to explode. And I, I would go for more power, say maybe 700. My brain would say, well, yeah, just put a VR in it because a VR at 700 would do it all day long on pump fuel, not care. Would I though? I, I, mean, I like being the underdog, even though it makes no sense. This is, this is no, this is no bush. He's not trying to say anything. How many times me and you say, it's like, you, you were tempted because every time we started the VR6 or the VR5, we're like, oh, next time you yeah. see the VR5. And yeah, exactly. I've got one ready. That's car. Yeah. But then you reasoning about it, thinking about it, always comes back to this. Yeah. There's no, which is why there's no bad option. How many times we say, stop overthinking and just do uh, what you guys tell you. Yeah, yeah. Because you just cannot get it wrong, you know? If you tell me you're gonna race this car, you're gonna race it 1.8. Yeah, that's my first choice. Well, no, we're gonna sponsor you, we're gonna have to race with the VR5. Mm. Guess what, still fine. Yeah, it's still so great. So I'm gonna say that's slightly different. VR6 is only 13 kilograms, good, because you're gonna service it. Slightly different setup. And that's it, really, no. is you can have the one-to-one. -one. What's the production car one-to-one? The, 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 oh, the, the cheapest one. Wasn't, <laughs> cheapest. That, Polo, wasn't that Polo the, the carbon one? Yeah. It's actually called, I think, one to one. Yeah, the Koenigsegg one to one and all yeah, that one, kind one, of stuff. Five and a half million. Yeah, million. yeah, yeah, something like that. Four oh, no, it's not pounds, it's cheaper. It's, it's euro. Oh, euro, sorry, sorry. Five and a half million, yeah. 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 Now, I'm not, we're, not, we're not shitting it. It's this. It's how easy it is to make this one to one. Oh, you can make this one to one for. I don't know the exact price, we know it's not much. Hardly in. VR6, to get VR6 with 1000 brakes has been done so many times with yeah. a fairly basic engine setup, yeah. right? The car weights about a ton yeah. at the point, one to one. So is a wrong engine for it? Yeah, but you know, it weights 50 kilograms. <laughs> exactly, it's like, <laughs> no, what? There is seriously? Because no, this is the thing as well. We say there's no wrong answer, but if a customer was asking something of us and it was wrong, we would say, no, we won't do that. But all of these kind of options, it's there is no them. wrong answer. Another one, it's, what's, the, what's the latest customer is, is Arthur, um, NA setup. Oh yeah, 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 NA He's not yeah. interested about the, the top part, it's just the noise, the experience, he wants NA, probably a screamer, so it's probably gonna be high revving, it's probably VR5 or VR6. Well, it, I was expecting to say VR6, but because he loves the five noise, he's probably going five, even though there's a disadvantage, NA especially, for power. I am all toolbox because yeah you know they're efficient but if you make me build a vr5 on the gnarly camps revving to whatever they rev nine on itbs then itbs behind my ears look at where, look mm. where the rtb is gonna be right behind my ears here i don't need a stereo <laughs> exactly. it's like the music to your ears it's like can you imagine the mm. screamer vr5 itbs screamer Awesome. This is another thing to show you how much we love these cars. If you tell me in any other car, ah, you're gonna, you, my S15, uh, S14, you're gonna put NA engine, nice and screaming, the R5, the R6, whatever is gonna be, beam a box, you know, M3, 3.2 on ITBs. No. No. One of these, absolutely yeah. yes. Any engine in this is just good. You yeah. know, as soon as it delivers you a good driving experience, it will combine with the chassis good no matter what yeah you want a one-to-one -one, you want a car that does over 200 miles an hour you want to pass bugattis you want to pass like you do the supercars and hypercars great you get there yeah. you want a track weapon great you get yeah. there you want a daily guess what this is something very strange right this is what i told you i think i said in my videos as well it's late no one actually watches them it's your fault <laughs> um when i tested i can remember what i said it is very strange because it's an awesome handling chassis and you have a VR6 turbo engine in that thing and yet it's a car that when I drive it, it does not push me to go fast. No, oh, it was so relaxing to drive. It was so nice just, just to drive it around mm. on the toe, just low RPMs, just rumble with the engine, it's just so much pleasure. Uh, NA, it would probably be the opposite. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it probably wants you to go, so same chassis, different setup, for something completely different, completely different result. And this gives you an idea how suitable this could be for anyone. Whatever you like is great. And uh, to be honest, 
that's not even true because for example I'm I prefer one thing if you tell me you're gonna be doing VR5 for the bodies high revit I would love to have one 800 brakes one VR6 turbo yeah I will still have to have one yeah. 1.8 I will still have one we'll look at the amount of I'll talk about it in a minute I think but all the amount of engine things i want to do with one of these chassis because it works i want and it, and it will all feel different so it, there is a point to it but i want about 10 different ones of these and it's ridiculous but the, the problem is they all make sense this is the, yeah that's what i mean there's no wrong answer and this truly is the problem now you're thinking we're talking sh shit but it's it's shame we don't have a hiding camera because if people knew how many hours we spent talking about stupid ideas you could say spent or you could say waste but yeah <laughs> waste and spend because they're not really of, wasted because this, this is all comes out from our ideas, ideas. Yeah, yeah. we just you know it's like that's stupid that's too much that's too much and we pick up okay this may be supposed to win and obviously this stuff was born so it's not bad but yeah they, they all make sense this is the problem because when you have so for example you say oh we're gonna put the vr6 in a month if it didn't make sense easy you discard the, the idea you discard the idea we have so many options now it's like it's difficult to discard yeah you could you know it's, it's how could you say vr5 high revving vr5 on itbs this is going to be bad because it's better to go turbo because you have more power no it doesn't mm. matter no it doesn't matter mm. everything is going to be i'm going to I might end up accidentally giving people ideas in a minute and I'll tell them the different things I want to do. But oh, it, it's, but it's all... Long yeah, well, it's already long. But, yeah, back to my stupid shit. Like I said, even though it makes more sense at big power to go VR6, for the moment at least, I, you know, my next one, just because I like being the underdog, which makes no sense. Some of you lot might not give a shit about being the underdog. You want to be the big boy with the biggest engine. That's what most people do. I'm the opposite. I like having the, the one that seems crap when it's not, rather than the other way around. So I'm this, and this is... But, saying that, if and when I build, say, a 700 horsepower one of these, and it is unreliable, it doesn't hold together, then yeah, I will, because it makes sense for big power. Or say if I did want, like, you know, stupid power, because the VR6, you know, they're proven at over 2,000 horsepower. And for straight line stuff, for drag stuff, if you're thinking purely common sense, like common sense, I want tons of power with the most reliability, you just go for a VR6, because big deal, 40 kilos. So what? When you're, you know, it's that's next to nothing. But at the same time, notice these two turbos here. And you know why they're on there? Because I couldn't stop thinking of, you know, stupid ideas. And I thought to myself, you know what would be fun? Great fun in one of these. Again, not the fastest round track, not the, not the anything. But for like a hooligan, mental talk, instant talk, smoke machine, ridiculous car. A VR6 with two relatively small turbos. And it looks cool because it's twin turbo. You know, two turbos hanging out the back. Would be amazing. But at the same time, I also want, which is why this exists, I love, like, um, 80s Group B rally cars. And the Audi five-cylinder turbo engines especially sound incredible. So, again, even though this has got the most power potential and the most torque and, you know, for the strongest for any given power, and this is the lightest and the easiest, I want a bloody VR5 one. Even though, technically, in your head... That makes the least sense, but in your heart, the engine, the just the feel of it, the everything, I want to do a VR5 turbo at some point. I want to, I don't want a big power VR turbo. I want a, a medium power turbo. You know, if I was going big power, yeah, I would just do something else, but a, a pure enjoyment mobile, the five sounds best to me. You want to come up like a rally? Yeah, like a rally car. It's yeah, ex now. yeah, ex yeah, exactly. I want, I would do it with a VR5. So there's no, there's no wrong options. It's like mine with 500 some horsepower. It's more than, tra it's got more low down grunt than a K-Swap or a 1ZZ or especially a 2ZZ. But it hasn't got loads really on track. You wouldn't want to be under like four and a half, five thousand RPM really, because the power is from then to 8,000 plus. 
But if you had a VR, a big VR with a litre plus more capacity would be a damn sight easier to drive. You know, you could be caught out in the wrong gear or you could be feeling slightly lazy or whatever. You don't have to be on it. Do you know what I mean? If 10 tenths, yeah, the 180 with smaller capacity is probably going to be a little bit better. But if you're not giving it full fucking 10 tenths, the extra capacity in the torque, I mean, if you go back to video a few weeks ago when we was driving this, and like you can pull off in like fourth gear, like it's first gear in a normal car, because you're talking a thousand kilo or less, roughly a thousand kilo car with big a big engine and big torque. So it's the, it's the enjoyment factor. And again, it's not so stressed. You wouldn't, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't necessarily be have to rev in the tits out of this. Whereas my 180T, realistically, you're revving to 8,000 before you're changing up to really get the most of it. So it, it just, it depends what you want. And there's no strict answer. There's heart, there's head, and there's so many options and they're all good. Because this is another factor too. It's all well and good saying, I will, I'm going to get a VR that can do 2,000 horsepower. But if you can't afford 2,000 horsepower or afford to fix 2,000 horsepower, what bloody difference does it make? You do what you afford. Like if you was going for a more simple package, you, it'd be madness not to start the 180 if you only wanted like 250, 300 brake. At 500, where I am, you could think it's stupid because it's overstressed, but because it's what I like and what I can work on, it's okay, for, it's good for me. But for somebody that wants a 500 brake car at a last in 10 years, you'd probably just get a VR and put a turbo on it and run seven PSI instead of, this 32 is, like I do. This is the thing, sorry for... No, it's fine. My questions. Yeah. This is, this is how complicated this is, how not easy this is. So let's, for example, uh, say that he's going to change his mind and say, I want to use a monitor truck and I want to go 1.8. I'm happy. Yeah. For my point of view, to build the car, I'm happy with that. And arguably, it could be a good choice. But if I'm going to say, yeah, 1.8 is better, I don't think that's a good advice because it won't be. No. It will be better in one regard, but even worse in all the regard. This is going to be so easy, so enjoyable, so nice sounding, blah, blah, yeah. talking. There's no such a thing as wrong gear in the corner. No, he said he was thought he wanted response and stuff. Yeah. It's like, wow. So that is, that is responsive even before the turbo comes yeah. out. Especially with how fast these cars are because they're light. Is how much you can use it and that's this is part of the reason why they hold together i i feel because there's no stress, you, there's no stress. you're pulling a very lightweight car along incredibly fast so is, you want to get to the end of the straight yeah. it takes you two seconds rather than 10 seconds let's get let's explain it because this is open in a technical way okay hmm. so this is your input shaft this is this grabs you first so you have the engine here this is your power output the power output is the power input inside this gearbox through the shaft through these gears to the other side is you um what do you call it not restriction um your resistance which is your tires with the weight you have to push forward so if we put exactly the same setup in a pickup you destroy this this explodes before, before the car moves yeah the gear, before yeah. you get out of the workshop you put this in a cage from 500 kilograms Okay. You're never ever gonna have no. to w worry about this. No. So this is another thing because, like you say, they are so light. Mm. They put stuff under stress much yeah. less. These gear are not under yeah. so much stress as in your other car. And as well, it's not only less stress because of weight. It's the time as well because your acceleration is so fast. You know, like say if you had a 190 brake engine in this, and you was doing the main straight at Silverstone, mm. how many seconds does that take? versus with tons of power, you're at the end in an eighth of the time, Listen, so you're not got your foot to the floor. Who don't race and don't try this properly have no idea how little time you spend on open throttle. Exactly. How we had, we had with, when Mortec used to be very popular on the Evos, we had data logs on, we had a map exactly where you are and how much, uh, how much you can use it. Sometimes we had people, unexperienced drivers mainly, mm. 700 brakes evils, and they said they want more power because they need to be faster. I passed them with 400 kilos, from yeah. 400 brakes car, okay? 
we went on a data log, and you can see obviously the throttle position is rarely full throttle. Yeah. You got full throttle off. Yeah. Brakes. Yeah. Off the brakes, cornering. No, you stay on. It's is 800 800 brakes in one of each in the truck to use them. What truck? I reckon even at Silverstone, yeah, where we've got see. some straights. You're going to be, say one of these 800 brake, I reckon you'll be on full throttle, five seconds a lap, probably at most. Down the main straight, and that's, you're going to get to the end of the main straight in about three seconds, and then a couple other seconds for the other two bits of straight. Realistically, it's not going to so, be much. <laughs> so you say, okay, so it's useless. No. no. Not necessarily, because it's fun. Also, it's actually good to have a super supercell, you have more power than you get used to it. If you get used to the power, you're gonna come to me, it's like, oh, I wanna spend more money. I need to spend more money because I wanna go faster. I don't feel like I'm using the car fully, blah, blah. All right. 800 brakes in MR2, even on a truck you say Silverstone, trust me, you're not gonna use no. it fully. It is gonna be difficult to use it fully. So, you have a surplus of car, you have more of a car, more power than you're ever gonna need, than you're ever gonna want. Mm. You know, we're not talking drag racing, we're talking circle mm. racing, we're talking road, well, road use. <laughs> I don't think people know what 500 brakes means in one of these cars. Yeah. Well, Most people. a good example, you said about looking at the data logging. We had that with, um, like, Mark with his RX-7, obviously, again, with data yeah, logging. Yeah, yeah. And we've when we've talked about times and he's done stuff with that, and Pete has looked at the date log and is like, Mark, you you wasn't even at full throttle. What are you on about? That's why it's not doing that. Because yeah. like, subconsciously, when it's that bloody fast, you might not realise that you're maybe subconsciously lifting a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's like, fuck, you know. Yeah. You know, I can see it on my own data logs and stuff, or even on my runs when I'm dragging something. Like, I know, when the time has got a bit slower... It's not like, oh, I wonder if it's broken. It's like, yeah, I blatantly chickened out or I didn't flat shift it. You know what I mean? Because that's it. Like, my car is fastest but through the gears if I flat shift it. And I know, but sometimes you're going that fast, instinct takes over and you're not flat shifting it. You're letting off to shift and stuff because it's that mental. You're not thinking about it. <laughs> you know, it's like... On the other side, what did you say when you started using nitrous? Oh, yeah. 500 brakes is, is has to be normal. Yep. I, you know what, last night I turned up my boost to uh, 3.2 bar from 3, uh, no, 2.2 bar from 2 bar. Right. And then when I and tested the nitro scan, and because I, I was just going to see and a few other improvements. Because also, because I was thinking there was a bit of a misfire at high RPM. I weren't sure. Turns out, yeah, I, I either need plugs or coils because suddenly it, was, it wasn't before, but it started to misfire only on the nitrous but at like 8,000 odd RPM. So either the plugs have had enough or maybe my coils have had enough. Both are quite old now. But because of that, I tested it without the nitrous as well last night, just to make sure it was not doing it on the nitrous, like without the nitrous and it didn't. But even 3.2 bar, no 2.2 bar, sorry, without nitrous, just like could do way more than that. Even though it's ridiculously fast, like ridiculously. And like... So you see it's like, we can, you can spend two days talking about this stuff and still getting nowhere. Yeah. There's, and that's, that's the show. If be, you want it... Because there's no wrong answer. The it's, honest opinion, yeah. that is the truth. It's yeah. heart and head. Like, head. Like, purely head. An unlimited budget. Drag. VR6. Time attack. 180. Fun. That. But, that makes... That's only unlimited budget and pure heart. Pure head. Because... How much money does it cost to build even one of these to more power than you just use one of these? More than a lot of people's budgets. So it do, that doesn't even work for everybody. And again, with this, time attack, I would say this if it was unlimited budget. But that's unlimited budget where you'd probably have to rebuild this after every event. Just at least strip it down new bearings because these have made 15, 1600 horsepower. But to last, like, you know, events is hard work never mind last season you're stripping it down did anyone watch world time attack last weekend in australia really really fast cars how many of them had blown up mid-lap pretty much every bloody car i watched was pouring smoke out the back because these cut time attack stuff if you go into the extremes 
they it will it's extremes so yeah so if you want it to last longer what's going to last longer a 180 at certain power or an engine with over a liter more unless one's wildly stronger than the other and it's not the case with these they are both very very strong the bigger engine is going to be less stress i said to thomas a minute ago when he was in the car about my silly ideas i'll tell you all the different things i want to do to one of these and i would own them all at once because there's no right or wrong answer it's just all of them i know will be fun thomas originally with the frog had a 1.9 tdi one that's the first one i drove it was cool as fuck it was re the mega low down torque of the diesel and it just doing like 8,000 miles to gallon all that stuff and it fits even easier than a 180 because the same block but smaller manifolds and smaller head and everything i would love a 190 di one of these with like like compound twin turbos just silly power no as a daily there's no reason apart from i know for a fact from driving thomas's it'd be awesome i want a twin turbo vr6 small turbo smoke machine one i also want a bloody 2000 horsepower drag 300 mile an hour in the bloody standing mile bugatti chiron wasting vr6 turbo crazy power but i also want a 700 plus four cylinder one for straight line stuff just because I like being the underdog. I want a Group B Rally, one of these. I also want a supercharged one with a massive supercharger. What I would like, and even that, I would probably have two. I would like a supercharged VR, but because I love the Lancia 037 and whatever Group B Rally cars, which are four cylinder, I'd love a big boost, proper screamer, supercharged four cylinder one. I actually want to do at some point uh, an ID 5.2 V10 longitudinally mounted in one of these as well. I want millions of things. And it's not like I would, because I know none of them are the perfect option, but I know all of them are fucking good. It's not about decision between this, you can't go wrong. You can't because we choose to do this kit obviously with these three, three main engines. Because there's a lot of engines you can do, you can go wrong with. Yeah. You know, but between these three in particular, you can't because there's 1.8 we already explained, then there's a VR6 to we already explained, and then there is in between which is the VR5. And then if you want to mix it, you can have a turbo, you can have it on ITB, screamer. Yeah. Or you can have a supercharger, or you, or you can, you have, can have twin charge. You can, this is a crazy thing. How, how could you come to me and ask which one is the best? We are talking the best options. Yeah, yeah. It's like whatever you choose, we already done the best yeah. options. Like with us, would you put in these cars yeah. that is better? Yeah. For the, the money, you can, of course you can put a V8 jet engine yeah. with the transversal, with the, with the longitudinal transmission. We're not talking this, we're talking affordable stuff that gives you the we minimum of work yeah. for, the best, um, for the best result. You know, this, I don't even know what to say to, to this guy. I honestly don't. No. Because I'm happy with the 1.8, I'm happy with the VR6. Like you say, for the pure durability and hassle-free, you just put few in the car, serve it once, once in a while, and track use. I mean, that at 800 brakes, doing track days, is going to be used at 30% of the capacity yeah. most of the time. It's going to lie. It's going to live for years. You know. Um, of course, if you want to push it, you want to race it. Not even then. Even then, no problems, you know? It's just, just compensate mm. with, the, with the suspension, put bigger tires, and you're still in the, in the same game. Yes. Yeah. It, it truly is not lying, it comes to personal preferences. Yeah. The, the fully dressed and the gearbox and everything, so the package as it goes in the car to be working between the 1CC and the 1.8 turbo, turbo, so massive difference in power, is only five kilograms yeah. different. So there's no difference, we can call it no difference. So between the standard uh, kind of weight distribution and the weight of the car, there is, in the worst case scenario, between the standard and the VR6 turbo is 40 kilograms. And taking account that 40 kilograms by is what, four inches forward? Yeah, four inches. No, exactly. You're switching from 235 to 245s and 
pace you take. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in two minds. What would be the biggest advantage? The further forward or the weight? I don't. I think it cancel each other out. I mean, forty kilograms. People would they go down to eight fifty kilograms with these? Roughly, quite yeah. Eight fifty. So imagine how much weight you can remove from these cars. All the all the body panels, yeah. uh, loads of stuff to remove. I mean, you can remove more than four, four, uh, yeah. 40 kilograms if you want. To. And even battery position. The, yeah, you know what I mean? Battery. Even because obviously battery is normally yeah. Yeah. quite far back. Even the battery now is it's in the middle. You could put it in the front if you want. Yeah, battery is battery is what? 15 kilos roughly on most cars? Yeah, my so, battery my battery yeah, is in the front. front. Yeah. Well, I'm using integrates, my integrates in the front. So again, just to do that. In Japan, they even use the, the they remove the fuel tank and they put the fuel cells yeah, in the front. Yeah, they put it in the front, front yeah, to balance out. Because yeah. you, these cars are so sensitive. You, 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 you change how the car drives if it understeers or oversteers with the tires pressure. Yeah. How many times we see it? Exactly. I, was, I couldn't believe it. It was like, oh, yeah. come on, let me Tire try it. Bit, yeah. And it actually is. Yeah. So, you know. It's, it's a, we're making a point this yeah. week. At, at the end of it, it's like, People are going to be okay. Let me know which one is best. No, there is, uh, there is no. Nowhere. But this is the trouble. This is the. This is the thing with the internet. The in, yeah. internet makes people think there's black and white answers for everything. Not. There's not black and white answers for everything. You, you said about the tire pressures. Again, these cars, even completely standard, is a good example of that. Like, you know, it's, it's not only tire pressures. Say like that. My daily car is completely bog standard. The gutless one ZZ and all that stuff. If you drive round a roundabout in a normal way, on the limit, it will understeer. They understeer on the limit. Even, that's just how they are. It's a, it's a high limit. You're going round a roundabout bloody fast. They handle amazing. And they've got a lot of grip. But it understeers. But does that make it an understeery car? No. Literally, on that same roundabout, with no changes to the car, just a slight change in driving style, I can skip that whole roundabout. You know, it's yeah. the same car, the same spec, the same everything. It's just a very slight difference in driving style goes from an understeering to drifting the entire roundabout. And it's with no... It's not snappy, snappy obviously. No, it's so not. People say it's not. Literally, it's like... Not. And this is the thing, and it's like... There is... The changes, like Thomas said, maybe a, a slight geometry change, maybe a slight tyre width change, and it will feel the same. So... But yeah, this video is long. Even after all the editing, I'm no doubt going to have to do to cut any crap out and any bits in between where we're just not actually talking no. about it. It's going to be about an hour long, especially. So thank you for anyone that's watched all this because it, it is it, it does make sense. And, and it's sorry for the noise, 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 the if you want an answer, if you want us to, to, to make one answer, 1.8, because the, the full kid is 1.8. Everything yeah. we do as a business is good. It's easy to work on, easy to fit, handles amazing, goes amazing, great value for money. Because that's what we do. We wouldn't sell it otherwise. So there is no right or wrong answer. They're all right. Just it's different kinds of right. My car at the moment, not that one, my 500 plus horsepower, I fucking love it absolutely amazing but do i know that one day if i put say a vr in it a uh, similar power would i not how would i know that i wouldn't suddenly go oh fuck me i wish i had done the vr from the first place it's way better i don't know that oh, who knows i i don't think i will but would i regret the 180 god no because it's still brilliant what yeah. are we gonna say to this guy if he wants he needs to make his fucking mind up <laughs> himself because there is no wrong answer. Right. Hopefully he can watch this. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell him in a minute the weight thing, you know, co confirmation. But, um, but he can I'm watch happy, this. I'm happy either way. He it, can switch me whatever. He's not going to regret any choice, is he? No, no. Uh, you know, the problem, I think the problem is this is a bit of a pickle. In the same pickle that I was two years ago when I um, went back racing the bikes mm. whatever he's gonna choose he's gonna be happy and whatever he's gonna choose he will have that yeah i have i'm sorry but that's the truth yeah. like, if he continues with the vr60 he'll be happy with this say yeah but if i had the 1.8 maybe it will handle even better if he goes 1.8 he'll be like oh it handles better it handles great but with the vr6 maybe it wouldn't hand bad 
uh, and I will have another twice the power. Yeah, or a lot more, uh, grunt, a lot more, you know. Uh, which, more responsive. Which is what I know, and this is why I sound mental to most people, but this is why I want about 15 different engine variations of these. Because <laughs> none of them, none of them is truly the best. They're all different in different amazing ways. Yeah. This, yeah, is, this, what, is, this oh. is what I did. It's like, so I've made a mistake. Now, do I gonna, I'm going to race on a smaller bike? Probably. So I'm going to sell you a big bike. No. no. It's amazing. I want them both. It's just <laughs> they do different things. Yeah. Well, you know? this is the thing. I think... It's if, all about experience. If I could, I would have an NA, a turbo, and a supercharged version of all these engines. Do you know what I mean? When, when, I, say, <laughs> like when I say you need experience, I'm not saying you need experience to be smart, to be wise, not to choose. No. I mean, build the experience. You have the experience, so leave the experience. You mm. know, enjoy it. Just yeah. leave it. Just feel it. Just it's your life. Yeah. through it. That's it. Which and is what most people don't get to do. They don't have the experience. I'll tell you what. Do you know what I'm going to tell you? Actually, we'll show you in the video. That's already done. We go ahead, build the engine. He's, he's going to be mad, he's going to be crazy, blah, blah. You want to, one of these, if you want to change your mind, get that setup because they get so popular. Get the whole VR6 800 brake setup, the whole thing sold to someone. It will sell immediately for probably very similar money you spend on that yeah. and put it 1.8. Yeah. You're not going to lose. No. Same chassis, I mean, suspension, Supreme, everything, everything fits. The all surrounding fits. Yeah. It's that simple. So even if you don't worry about making a mistake, if you do make a mistake, or if you find out that you want something different because you have experience now, you experience this, you're happy with it, you want to experience something new, don't worry about it. Mm. This stuff keeps the value. Sell it, change it, or keep yeah. it for another car. Jeez, yeah. It's so simple. You can build another car yeah. for, for, for that means and sell this one. Mm. Or have two of them like I have my race bikes. Yeah, well, enjoy each for what they, they well, for what they are. Have you got any final things to add before I spend the next seven years trying to edit this? No, it's just to scramble Chris's head. If anyone watches the entire lot of this, it's, it's, I don't know if this is a podcast or a video, but <laughs> this is a nightmare to edit. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, thank you for watching it all. You've probably went for about 20 adverts, so even if I get 100 views on this video, I'll probably make a thousand pounds in adverts. So, <laughs> yeah, um, hope this did you some good. I'm back to normal, um, normal service next time. Bye-bye.